This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we are going to show you how to install a processor into a Dell Precision T5810 workstation. In our case, we are upgrading from a lower end E5-2603 V3 processor. Uh, we just need a little bit more performance, so we are going to go to an E5-2637 V3 quad-core uh, 3.5 gigahertz processor. So a higher clock speed, it's going to allow us to, to have a little bit more performance, uh, whether it be gaming or, you know, doing some CAD CAD work. It, it's going to be an awesome processor. So first step when you are installing or upgrading a processor, uh, what, you, what you should do is upgrade your BIOS. Um, and how you're going to do that is you are going to go to Dell.com, click on the support page, go to drivers and downloads. And go ahead and either enter your service tag or if you've looked at it under Resic Products, you can do either one of those or you can do an auto detect. Um, since I have it in Resic Products here, I'm just going to click on that. Now, this auto or this detect drivers tool is really nice. It's going to find every driver available that you don't already have installed or even, you know, other updates like the BIOS in our case. So... You can use that if you'd like. It'll take you probably 10 to 30 minutes to use that. Now, we're just gonna show you exactly where to get the BIOS. So click on Category, BIOS. Go ahead and download and install it. It is gonna cause your system to reboot, but do this before you upgrade a processor. Um, it's just a really good key, you know, so you don't have any microcode update issues. Because if you have a microcode update issue, typically you're gonna get no video. Okay, so. Um, and then quickly, I'm going to bring it to greenpcgamers.com. If you have a T5810 and you are looking for upgrade ideas, we give you a lot of that information here as far as step codes for processors, uh, memory upgrades, uh, memory configurations, hard drive upgrade ideas, um, graphics cards, sample configurations, you know, tons of videos, tons of content, free. So bookmark this page if you ever need ideas and upgrading your your system if it's t5810 or we do pretty much any model that you can think of on the blog if we haven't done your model um, go ahead and click on suggest a topic and uh, we will try to accommodate your request as fast as possible okay so back to the video here please upgrade your BIOS before you do this um, so here's our t5810 now this is a single socket CPU system so um, we can only put one processor in the system unlike some of the other precision workstations. Here's our processor. We have heat paste from Shiatsu MicroSci. Um, this is again the E52637V3, 3.5 gigahertz proc. Uh, it, it runs max turbo frequency right around, I believe it's 3.7 gigahertz. Here's the proprietary heat sink. Um, there's the part number. It's got a fan built into it. You'll want to use the proprietary heatsink because you had to plug that fan into the motherboard, and if you don't do it, it's going to hang on post. So you should have this already in your system. If you don't, go out and buy one. You can see the part numbers. Go ahead and pause on the page. All right, here's the back of the chassis. So typically when you go with a high clock speed CPU, um, you want to have the higher wattage power supply. So this system supports a 425 watt or a 685 watt. We already had the 685 watt installed because, again, we use this for gaming and other uses. So we also want to have that higher wattage power supply for our GTX 1080, as you, as you can see. Okay, so we have no CPU installed. Um, it's very important to be very careful around the pins. Um, before we decide to replace this, uh, or to get into the processor install, go ahead and remove your optical drive. You'll want to remove this memory shroud before you attempt to install, um, just because it opens up. It gives you a little bit more room and it gives you a lot more room to access that uh, Molex connector for the fan that's on the heatsink. So we have two retention clips. You can do the bottom one first, like you see, and you can do the top one, so that unlocks the top one, and then you'll just go ahead and very gently lift up and pull that open. Do not touch those pins. Now you'll want to drop your CPU in there very gently, line it up. There's four notches. As you can see, we've got ours lined up. So if you just copy what we've done here as far as the text going, uh, well, it's a little bit sideways, but match exactly how we're doing this. 
You know, push it in, see all those notches are perfect. Now you can lock your heat sink or your retention clips back into place. And it'll lock that CPU in. At this point, we do need to add our heat paste or thermal grease. Again, we use Shiatsu Microsci. It works a lot better. It's a lot easier to clean up if you need to upgrade or change products later compared to some of that other Arctic Shield or other brands. So we just put a, like a pen cap source right in the center of the CPU. And what's gonna happen is that will spread out once the heat sink is installed and, and there's a little bit of heat generated, it'll evenly spread out across the processor and keep it nice and cool. So we've lined up our, our, our heat sink with the fan. We've got it blown the proper way. And we're plugging in our connector for the fan. So that gets juice. And then we've got four screws that we have to lock in. Do not use a power drill for this. Use a just a regular, you know, Phillips screwdriver and so you don't break anything. So all right, so we've got that installed. Now we do have to put our memory shroud back into place. I'm doing this with one hand, so it's a little bit tough. But line up that end, and then you can maneuver that the shroud around the cables, and it will drop right into place. And it clicks. Uh, and then we have to move our optical drive cage back into place. And once we have done this, we've done the actual hardware install. And we've already done our BIOS update. So now we can go into the F2 setup and see how well the install went. So we're in the F2 setup. Uh, we go to system information. We see that our BIOS is up to date as of this date, A19. I'm sure there'll be a newer one with years to come, but right now it's A19. And we see that our processor is showing up perfectly. Uh, E5 2637V3, 3.5 gigahertz. It's, it's exactly what we want to see. Uh, we're going to go into performance, make sure that Turbo Boost is enabled so we can get our max turbo frequency. So if our CPU needs to run higher than 3.5 gigahertz, it can. All right, so that's enabled. Now let's go, we have, I believe, Windows 10 installed in the system. So um, we're going to go on to the device manager, Windows 10, just take a peek and see how our processor is showing up. Now, Windows 10, we have HyperThread in enabled. So it's actually showing up as eight cores, but really it's a quad core. There's eight threads. Uh, but yeah, everything is installed. It's working perfectly. I hope this video uh, this video helped you. Um, if Please visit GreenPCGamers.com for additional content. Um, I already brought you to the page, but if you have T5810, 7810s, older models, find the blog that covers the upgrades on it and bookmark those. So if you ever need to do upgrades, you have that, uh, that available to you. Uh, make sure and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, if, you have, if you would like to ask live questions, uh, go ahead and follow. Um, uh, it should be JBigTicket23, so there should be a 2-3 at the end of that. Um, go ahead and follow on Twitch to ask live questions. Uh, thanks again for watching.